I'm gonna go with Conjureverse. That sounds good. I'm, I, if nobody else has said that as of yet, I'm going to, uh, what do they call it, copyright that. But Conjureverse. Anytime somebody says it, I get royalties. Yeah, I'm sure. Let's see if that works out. So let's jump into this week's news bits and talk about those little stories for the week that we don't want to forget, but aren't quite big enough to have their own little featured spotlight story here on the show. First off, first up, I don't really know who this is for, and I am actually kind of surprised about this, but The Nun 2 is a thing, I guess, and it has a release date, uh, not an exact date, but a time, set for fall 2023. Okay, didn't The Nun bomb? Didn't Wasn't it? I honestly, I didn't see it. I saw The Conjuring. I haven't seen The Nun. But my understanding was that it was pretty shit. So, is anybody looking for this? Is it, or anybody looking forward to this? I don't know. But it's coming, that's for damn sure, in a, about a year. So, fall, we're entering fall now. We'll, we'll be going into fall, what, about a month from now? So, in about a year and some change, we're going to get, well, somebody's going to get, I probably won't see it, The Nun 2. So, if you are a huge Nun fan, or you're just like everything Conjuring, Conjureverse, is it, would it be Conjureverse? It's the Conjuring Universe. I feel like they always have to have these little acronyms, or not acronyms, but like shortened versions of these things. I'm going to go with Conjureverse. That sounds good. I'm, I, if nobody else has said that as of yet, I'm going to, uh, what do they call it, copyright that. But Conjureverse, anytime somebody says it, I get royalties. Yeah, I'm sure. Let's see if that works out. But The Nun 2 is coming out, coming in about a year and some change in fall 2023, if that's your thing. Also, we have from A24, they have announced that The Front Room is a thing that is happening. What the front room is, is the directorial debut of the Egger Brothers, or Eggers Brothers, I'm sorry. You may be wondering, who, who the hell is that? That is Sam and Max, great game by the way, but it's a totally separate subject, but Sam and Max <clears throat> Eggers, they are the siblings of Robert Eggers. That name may ring a bell. He is the gentleman who made things such as the Vivitch. Yes, I know it's the witch, but I can't help but call it the Vivitch, because the way that they titled it. And uh, the lighthouse, the extremely out there and weird lighthouse that till this day, I'm not really sure if I like that movie or not. I either hated it or loved it. I can't decide, but I couldn't stop watching it. And of course, one of my favorite films of this past year or this year that we're in right now, The Northman, awesome movie. Well, this is his brothers. I think younger brothers, Sam and Max, they are doing their director directorial debut of the front room from A24, so staying in line with their brother's work and the people he does business with, and they have cast Brandy. Yeah, Brandy, the singer, the young lady singer. I think she's on like Disney Channel and stuff like that. She is going. She was in a Cinderella movie or something. I don't. I don't remember. I don't really follow her that much. But she is cast in this film. Not much is known about it except that it is going to be a thriller of sorts. So that's coming soon from A24. So if you or a Robert Eggers fan, well, his brothers are making a movie, and hopefully they're in the same wheelhouse as Big Bro Robert. We'll find out. It does not give a, a, a release date from the story that I saw, at least, but it's coming soon at some point somewhere to you. Uh, the Front Room. Check it out whenever it comes out. Okay, also, here's a, a kind of a heartwarming cool little story something that's coming from tragedy i don't know if we call it tragedy but an unfortunate event uh nichelle nichols which is the name of lieutenant uhura from the original star trek tv show and uh the movies the first movies the ones with captain kirk and whatnot not the uh the new ones but she is uh you may know she recently passed away she was 80 something years old she lived a very long fruitful life uh, did a whole lot of cool things, worked with NASA, all kinds of cool things throughout her life, lived, lived a very fruitful life. Um, she passed away at that time. Um, I can't remember from what. It may have just been natural causes. Not sure, but she she's no longer with us, uh, which is unfortunate, but part or some of her ashes, she was cremated apparently, but some, not all, but some of her ashes are going up with a space, space mission that is uh, launching here soon. There's not an exact date, but soon from Cape Canaveral. And they're going to launch some of her ashes out into space so that she can be the, as this report says, and I, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense, the first person to be 
their ashes to be spread across more or less the universe. So she is going out. It's a fitting end for such a phenomenal actress and uh, icon. So part of her will be out in the universe forever. I think that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty neat. That's a, a nice little... I mean, I'm not going to say it's a tragedy because she lived a very long, fruitful life. It's unfortunate that she did pass and went along and is no longer with us, but, you know, that's just how life is. It happens. And it's pretty neat that, you know, they're sending her her ashes out into space. Now, this this ship that's going up, it's not going up just to do that. It's going up for other purposes, but they're sending the ashes along with it. So, But, you know, that's pretty neat. Pretty pretty cool, pretty heartwarming, I think. that's. I like that. I don't, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I like that. All right, so moving on. House of Dragon. Any of you that would possibly be interested in that show, which there are quite a few because it had, it broke records on its premiere with 10 million viewers in, uh, on its, uh, at its premiere. Uh, the Game of Thrones prequel, which Game of Thrones, awesome show. I have not seen House of Dragon. I wanted to wait until all of it was out so I could just kind of binge it. But uh, Game of Thrones, I really enjoyed. Even the last season, which was nowhere near as good as the rest of them, there was stuff about it I liked. But House of Dragon, getting great reviews. Everybody's really liking it thus far. It has already been greenlit, or it is officially being greenlit, greenlit now for a season two. So we are getting more House of Dragon, more Game of Thrones prequel. And I'm sure HBO and Warner are very happy about that because... They need and want, they want and definitely need that Game of Thrones style hit on their hands because they are having some issues over there at the House of Warner. But, um, hey, cool. I hear it's a good show. I cannot comment on it either way because I have not yet seen it. But coming, we're getting season two at least. We'll see how it goes. All right, uh, almost done here with the news bits. Like I said, not a whole lot today and all by myself. But... High on Life, which is a new game coming from Justin Roiland, the creator of Rick and Morty, amongst other things. Uh, it's not out yet, but it is coming soon. It's a first-person shooter with a twist and a sense of humor. We talked briefly about it last Wednesday because it was at Gamescom. Well, they have just said, Justin Roiland said that there are, or it wasn't actually him that said it. He's the creator of the game, but someone involved with the game said that the game is going to have, it comes out very soon. The game is going to have 20 Justin Roiland shorts and four feature-length films in it. Like, there's a part of the game where you can go, and apparently there's a TV and a sofa and all that, you can just go sit down and watch all this stuff. So hours and hours and hours of content. It did not say what the feature-length films were. I don't think that they were Justin Roiland films. I don't know if he's made films. It's not like some Rick and Morty films or something like that. But uh, They may be, but it, it made it sound as if they're more... Those are different films, probably public domain films or something. But he did make, I'm assuming they made, the, the 20 shorts are his. They're shorts of his creation. Whether they were made just for this game or their past shorts, I don't know. They didn't really specify. But they're in there. So a whole lot of content, you can just go down, sit down in the game and watch. That's very meta. Watch TV within the TV. Um, now, I will say that the, that, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty neat. I will say that the two reports I read about this uh, misreported something, in my opinion, unless I'm remembering or reading something incorrectly. They said <clears throat> this is like a first where you can actually watch this type of content, like a content within the content, like a whole movie and stuff like that. That is actually inaccurate, is not the first. There was a game called The Darkness from Smilebite. It was not Smilebite. So, uh, Seabr I cannot remember the name. It was on the Xbox. There's only there's two of them, the darkness and the darkness two. But I'm thinking of the first darkness. Pretty sure was it the Xbox or the Xbox 360? I can't remember. It was on one of those two, and it had a part. Starbreeze. Starbreeze was the developer. Made the Chronicles of Riddick. But it had um, TVs throughout the game where you could sit there and watch entire episodes of and uh, entire movies. There were some movies. It was all public domain stuff but all that was there. So unless something about the wording I misread, no, this isn't the first time, but it's still cool. I think that's still pretty cool that they've got that info or that in there. And it's, that's a lot, 20 fucking shorts and four whole movies. Damn. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sit there and watch the whole things, maybe the shorts, but movies, I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? High on life. Got a whole bunch of content in it. So get ready for that. Okay. Last little news bit we got of the day. This concerns DC and the Warner Brothers shakeup they got going over there, all kinds of craziness going on. And we're gonna talk more about that in a few minutes, a different aspect of it. 
But as some of you may know, a few weeks back I reported that, and many people reported that, uh, David Zasloff, the big head dick over there at Warner Brothers, is looking for his Kevin Feige for the DC. He wants to find someone to spearhead the whole thing, keep it all together, and make some shit happen. Well, he may have found him. Maybe. It was being reported a little bit earlier in the week, and this was actually the original story I was going with when I first saw it. Dan Lin, who is a producer, is uh, would be taking that role. And that's not 100% sure at this point. Now, they have clarified. But he could be the new DC Kevin Feige. So, okay. I don't know that much about Dan Lin, but from what I saw other people talking, he would not be a bad choice. He's made some good decisions in the past. You'd have to look the guy up. Unfortunately, like I said, this is just a smaller story. I don't have like his filmography or everything he's been involved in over the years, but uh, he is apparently one of the front runners. Now they did come forward and say, "Hey, that's because they were reporting that it was going to be him. He was he was going to be the guy." Um, they have come forward and said, "No, not necessarily. You know, we're we're just talking." But uh, according to one report I read, they're talking salary. And stuff like that. So, I mean, you talking salary, unless they can't figure out the salary, yeah, he's going to be the guy, I would imagine. But it's not 100% yet, but don't be surprised if here in the next coming weeks we find out that Dan Lin is the guy, that he ends up being in charge of DC or the DCEU and all that stuff over there moving forward. All I know is they need to get somebody in charge over there and uh, with a singular vision to get this show moving. Even if it's a singular vision that I'm not interested in, <laughs> I just need to get somebody to get some order going on over there because Jesus Christ, Warner Brothers, while I get that all this you got going on over there is probably the same kind of crap that went down when Marvel was bought by Disney and Star Wars by, by and all these other companies buy these big entities like this, it wasn't put on black. I mean, all your business is out there. We're hearing all about it. Get, let's get some good news, which we may have later in the show. Possibly, depending on how you look at it. Alrighty, everybody. That is this week's News Bits. That's all we got. If there was something I missed, hey, let me know in the comments. I definitely, I know there was because there's other news, but that's the shit I wanted to talk about. And that's all that's important, at least in my world. 